Hello, YouTube. Welcome to another video. This is Dominic, your favorite customer experience expert. Today's topic is going to be what are Zendesk macros? This is another question from the community. Okay, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, my name is Dominic. I'm a Zendesk consultant or customer experience expert. I have been one for the past nine years. I have also worked at Zendesk and I'm here to share some of the knowledge. I like to give back to the community. And if you want to see some special content, comment below, uh, like this video for the algorithm and subscribe to this YouTube channel because only like 9% of you are subscribed. Naughty, naughty. Anyways, so uh, today's topic, again, what are Zendesk macros? So let's break it down because I love doing these uh, videos because I know oh, you like my, uh, uh, my Simpsons uh, t-shirt. So yeah, today talking about macros. So what are Zendesk macros? Zendesk macros are templates, if you will. Okay, so if you want to just simplify it to only one word, one keyword, it's going to be templates. So templates is something that you can use to, you know, to templatize your answers or templatize your actions that you perform in Zendesk. So Zendesk macros, uh, you're going to have to get used to like a disclaimer, not a disclaimer, but it's for you to know and understand is that you have to make it so that you get used to the Zendesk terminology because the macro, it's like, what, what the heck is in, what, the, what is the Zendesk macro? So it's a template, right? You have to get used to forgetting everything that you know, and you have to relearn it within the Zendesk universe, which uh, the terminology of Zendesk means something particular, which, well, it's fine. You know, that's actually uh, most platforms do that. But you have to be wary that once you start out with the new platform, like Zendesk, for example, you have to get used to the terminology. And the Zendesk macro is a template. Now, you can use this for multiple purposes. You can, for <clears throat> the initial purpose of it, it, how it started out, is to have you be able to reply to repetitive uh, re repetitive tickets or repetitive customer service requests to reply with a pre-written text, right? So it's very useful if you have certain types of requests that are very similar to one another and you don't necessarily want to always type in the same kind of answer. You use macros for that purpose. Now, obviously, there are very a little bit more technologies evolving and there's uh, more intelligent ways of using macros or using uh, you know other kinds of uh, templates, if you will. So macros are uh, t definitely a productivity booster, and I, I give it give it credit, and you'll see why. Because I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you exactly what I have in mind. However, technology evolving on that topic, uh, you can leverage, for example, articles in your knowledge base. So if you, for example, create, uh, you use the same template over and over, same macro over and over. You maybe realize like, hey, you know what? I'm actually replying with the same kind of answer each time. So why don't I just make an article in my CMS and my Zendesk guide? Um, and I just use that. And I just say, hey, dear customers, do you maybe want to read this article that uh, we've written about this topic? And uh, then if it doesn't help, maybe you get back to us. That is one way, right? So you encourage self-service, you reduce your time. And uh, also... What you can do is you can use the AI, so AnswerBot, as it's called in Zendesk, to use this uh, this um, this article that you've written to use it by itself, and you just forget about it, right? These kinds of requests that usually follow that need this kind that read need this repetitive answer each time, and just be taken care of by the AnswerBot, and then you just uh, wash your hands of it, right? You don't even know, you don't even need to see it anymore. Okay, so uh, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you, walk you through with the uh, macros for a little bit, give you a, some best practice advice. And yeah, and you can take it from there. So let's see. Share screen. All right, so I have this one. I hope you can see this is the test account. We're going to navigate to the admin center, but I'm going to use this one here because I have an app which is called admin center and I'm just essentially navigating. I'm just saving time. You don't have to go in here and open another browser window with admin, etc. It's a it's an app. It's an I made another video about it. I don't know how to link it. <laughs> uh, but it yeah, it's an app that you can use. 
Okay, so now we're going to go to workspaces where we have our macros. And here we have our macros. So macros, again, very powerful tool, very, 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 very nice to use uh, as a template. So let's just go and create one. Let's just go ahead and create one. Let's add a macro, obviously give it a name. So uh, spoiler alert, I have created a macro video, which is very detailed in the past. It, it didn't have this very good uh, camera quality back then. Well, it's not amazingly good, but it's better than the, that previous video. And I didn't have uh, this microphone, which the sound was sucked as well. But I'd like to think the quality of that video was better. <laughs> anyway, so let's give it a name. Let's call this a billing issue. Billing issue. Now. Now let's go drill even further. So if you don't know, then I will uh, discuss this as well. So you can add double colon, double colon. And what this does is going to create a category for you automatically. So if you create this, this means that this is going to be your first level. And then what comes here is going to be your uh, what's beneath this first level. Uh, billing issue, I don't know. ask customer if they, if they checked the mail, uh, no billing issue if they checked their uh, inbox first. Okay, now I can go a, even a level deeper onto this. I can create billing issue type one and then add double colon, double colon. And this creates another category, right? So I can go in here, I think up to seven levels. You don't need that many. So don't, don't, just don't. But anyway, just I'm just going to create this one with one level billing issue. Ask customer to check their inbox first, right? So it's just a template to uh yeah to see if the actually the customer maybe missed it it's in their spam or something so description i'm not going to give it a description who is this going to be available to all agents uh agents in a specific group or is it just available to me i'm going to make it available to everyone so now add actions um i'm going to set the subject of this um billing issue i'm going to say uh, billing issue for, I'm going to put here, uh, billing, uh, billing issue, uh, check in. I just call it like that. Now, I'm going to put a comment, comment description, bam. And I'm going to say, hi, and then I'm going to use a placeholder. A placeholder for you is, if you don't know, a placeholder is a dynamic, uh, dynamic, placeholder essentially holds saves information in it and you can leverage this information so this is how it works i'm lacking a, a lot of words today <laughs> probably i'm tired uh it's been a long day so let's see so hi uh ticket requester first name right i, I want to be make this experience personal so let's call it ticket requester you see and this one is uh, actually following what i'm saying so it's a curly bracket or bracket bracket Ticket dot request or email, not email, first name, uh, last name. No, I just want to have first name because I, I want it, I want this to be very personal, right? So I want to say, hi, Dominic, hi, Rachel, hi, John, hi, uh, Christina, etc. right? So I want to make this as a personal experience. Hi, ticket request or first name. Um, in order to help you, um, I'd first like to ask if you have maybe checked your inbox or the email we regularly send it regularly send it via via email um uh, 12 hours after the purchase now um uh please check i'm going to advise them to please check their uh please check their spam folder Please check your spam folder uh, in case you can't find it. I'm happy to uh, uh, look into the issue in more detail. But first, let's make sure we get this out of the way right so this is a standard process that i have with my company and i'm sending the invoice 20 12 hours after the purchase so 
if they have not waited for 12 hours, maybe now they know they should wait or they should check their spam folder, right? So two actions that maybe the customer hasn't done. And if they maybe do and they wait or they check the spam folder and it's there, then they don't necessarily need my help anymore. And I don't have to um, yeah, bother with them. So kindly, I'm going to make this personal again. I'm going to put the uh, bracket bracket agent. Uh, let's call that ticket assignee, maybe a ticket assignee name. Let's make it ticket dot signee, not email, first name. And that's my name. Obviously, you can put here the agent signature as well. If you have the agent signature enabled, then it will automatically take it. But anyway, I'm just going to uh, use this because I want you to see how it is. Now, it's not just about this text. It's also about you using this, for example, status. If you want the customer to look in their inbox to do something, what does that mean? It means that the status can change to pending because it means you're asking them to come back to you with more information, right? Have you checked that? And if they have, maybe there, you know, this, so you can actually uh, put it on, uh, on, uh, and dissolve later on if they get, get back to you and say, yep, all good. Status pending. What else? I can add a tag. Let's put a tag. Add tag, um, billing, billing issue, check. You don't have to go as detailed as I go in here in box. Um, this is just an example of stuff you can do with the macro. Now I can do other stuff. I can change the form. I can change the priority. I'll put this to normal priority, please. What else can I do? I can change the assignee. I can uh, remove tag add bags, odd follower, comment mode. Very important. Comment mode. I want this to be public because I can also say comment mode private, which makes it an internal note, which the customer won't see. So it's very important to add as well. Common mode public. Now, what else can I make it? What else can I do here? I can, of course, amend ticket properties, right? I can change the, uh, I don't know, the drop down type of uh, type of request, type of inquiry, Oop, type of inquiry. I can put it to, you know, billing, right? So I can do perform all kinds of actions, not just uh, this, uh, just this text reply. Now, let's create this billing issue, ask customer if they need blah. Okay, now let's go to our support and give this a shot. Let's take this, boom, let's take this ticket. Uh, and now let's go activate the our macro. Let's scroll for it. Ah, obviously, it's not here because I have not refreshed my screen. So and the number one rule of Zendesk is you have to refresh your screen, my, brother, my friend. Uh, otherwise, you won't be seeing stuff around. So... Let's take this on. So here we go. Billing issue. And you see you have this parent, you have this uh, arrow here, which means that you have another level billing issue. And then ask customer if they check the inbox first. Bam. Boom. Look. Hi, the. <laughs> That's my name. The. <laughs> the first name, the. And then last name, customer. Ooh, very inspiring. And then the first reply. You see how this dynamic text keeps text, uh, dynamic placeholder keeps text in it, saves data in it. Look. Um, so who is the assignee of this? It's uh, Dominic CX. It, it, it is I. <laughs> so it takes this dynamically and the is the first name. This is not a very inspiring name. Um, just want to look for one which looks better. Look, Zachary. Oh, this is no, someone from Sendesk. Let's take this one with Francesca because this would make it look better. Let's take this billing issue. Blah. Boom. Hi, Francesca. Kindly Dominic, right? So I can just, uh, right? So you see, all my properties have been modified. This is in pending now. If I just click it, it'll going to be saved in pending. Look, my tag has been added here. Check it. Uh, billing issue check in box. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Priority, normal, et cetera, right? So um, what I can do is I can also go in here and I can put the little eye on it and I can click it and I can see exactly everything that is being altered, all the ticket properties that are being altered and everything that's going on with this ticket. So Subject has been set, tags have been set, priority has been set, status has been set, uh, type of inquiry, uh, billing. Then, yeah, then is this the reply? I apply the macro and then that's it. Boom. This would uh, automatically come as a reply in my inbox. Um, okay, now, a uh, thing with best, best practice. So, if you are running a multinational company and you offer support in multiple languages, then this text needs to be uh, translated with dynamic content. So if you thought dynamic content, you were right. And I did not time this. <laughs> uh, 
to test yours and this knowledge, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what's important is that I talk through I talk you through this as well. So how do you do this? Well, you go back to your admin center and you go to workspaces and then you go to dynamic on. Now you need to add the dynamic content add item. Uh, look, put billing, double colon, double colon, does the exact same thing, thing. it creates a category. So billing, uh, let's copy this. Let's see if I can get it from here. Yeah, I'm taking the text. Uh, and then, ah, I done, I've done a very bad thing. Now, uh, let's go back to our settings because I did not copy the text. Here it is, billing. Um, ask customer if, customer if they checked inbox. I pressed it, inbox. Now, let's put this in English from the United States, blom. Hi, and this I put the, I can, it, this works with dynamic placeholders as well. The ticket requester, requester, first name, make it personal. Then boom, I make this. Kindly ticket assignee first name. All right, nice. So now I can create this. Boom, create this. And look what I see, what I do with this. So this creates a dynamic placeholder for me, which contains, dynamically contains the information that I need for this reply. So this is what I'll be using in my macro. But first, what I want to show you is the fact that this is very important and you have to keep it somewhere safe. Um, I usually use an Excel. We're not going to walk you through that uh, right now, but uh, what I want to do now is I want to add the variant of text in German, for example. I go here and I add a new variant and I put, uh, let's put German. Okay, so let's use our translate. Translate. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, and here I need Deutsch. Deutsch, bitte. Uh, uh, German. Okay, much better. Uh, okay. Hello, Francesca. Copy this. I'll put again ticket requester first name. Bam. Dann freundlich. Ticket assignee first name. Nice. Okay, so now create. I should not have gotten make you go into this, but I will make another video about this specifically. So I just want to finish this example to uh, make like the whole experience of multi language and macros come together. So copy this, uh, go back to my macros here, go to macros, go to this newly created macro that here it is. And now the text, just take it, delete it, paste this placeholder, which contains my text. Now, this is what I'm going to be using. I know the list looks ugly right now, but trust me, it's going to look good later on. So now, remember what I said about uh, whoop, about refreshing your screen to make anything uh, take effect in Zenesk? Well, then you probably are right. If you remember, then you remember, then you are good. Support. Close this down. Apply macro. Billing issue. Here we go. Uh, this one has no assignee, but it took the name dynamically. It took it in English. All good. Now, if I go to this person and I change the language to German, Dutch, Deutsch, I go back here. I delete this. I refresh my screen so it so it takes it from zero. It's going to take my text in German. Supposedly. Just click. Hallo Dominic. Um Ihren zu helfen, um Ihren zu helfen möchten ich uh, zuerst fragen, blah blah blah. Right? So it's uh, it's taking the text in German. So I have no idea why it wasn't working before, but it's working now. Long <sighs> day. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.